Hi everybody, my name is Ian O'Byrne. Uh, what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, the materials for this session are already up on Twitter. Uh, they will be up on my blog. I'll share everything else on there. Um, there's way too much. You're going to see data from my dissertation and some of my research questions that I hope will guide the rest of my career. Uh, to start us off, I want to have a little bit of a summary. I think that we spend a little bit too much time focusing on just reading, and I think that we have opportunities as we use the internet and other communication technologies to empower students as writers also. There's a tremendous reader-writer nature of online information that we should take advantage of. Um, so one of the things that Rick brought up last night was this notion of remix or mashup culture. Uh, and I think it's a, a powerful opportunity for literacy researchers, but sometimes when we hear about remix or mash of culture, it sounds a little bit dangerous or forbidden. So one way for us to think basically about it is through ideas about music and music uh, collection and transformation. So previously, we would all hang out at the local music spot and somebody would play something, and you were like, that was so incredible. You go home and tell your family, but it was like, You'd have to like hum it out or try and like tap it out for them, um, but there was no real way for us to share or recreate that. Then we started to play around with records and LPs, and what we saw is, especially with like hip hop culture, we would start to remix and, and remake music from old samples. It was a hell of a lot easier than going out and bringing you know that uh, the, the whole entire orchestra with you to your friend's house to be able to play the music. Technology advanced a little bit. How many of us here? Uh, took cassette tapes or singles, and what would you do, pop the tabs off and then make a mixtape for a boyfriend, girlfriend? Anybody here do that? Yeah? KCO, I know you've done that before. Uh, so we make mixtapes and we repurpose it, but the truth of the matter is, this is how we listen to music now. Okay, we have ubiquitous, all-access music, our kids are taking it, they're downloading it, some people here are downloading illegally, uh, we're sharing music with each other, and this is the way that we listen to music now, and we remix it using these digital files. So what I think we should do is, uh, the research that I conducted, there was a couple different elements that guided my research, obviously cognitive apprenticeship, uh, new literacies research, uh, a lot of critical literacy components, I'm a big believer in critical lit, and this is a pregnant pause, because I'm hoping that you read the last bubble, but... That's 20. Um, the basic research question that I had was, how can I work with students to not only comprehend, you know, comprehend the, uh, in, in terms of online reading comprehension, but recognize markers in online informational text and reconstruct those markers? That's what's important to me. I want them to be writers of online information. Uh, settings and participants worked in the economically challenged school district with seventh graders. I think that uh, a lot of the research that I do, I like to work with econom economically challenged school districts because these kids don't have opportunities to work with digital texts and tools. That's where I want to be. I want to be there with all the issues and all the concerns. There's about 125 students that I worked with, uh, and like I said, seventh grade population. I wanted to move them from reading and writing in a traditional sense over to the use of internet and digital text and tools. So what we used was an online research and media skills model that Greg and I have been developing for a couple of years now, looking at online collaborative inquiry, online reading, online content construction. In terms of data analysis, I had two phases of data analysis. <laughs> I had two phases of qualitative data analysis. What I did in the study was I had students, they would look at hoax websites, and I would trick them, they got all mad at me and they cried, why would the teacher lie to me? And then I had them create their own hoax websites, okay? So what did I learn from this? What I learned is, the kids were more observant and critical of online informational text. You know what else? They really liked Wikipedia after that, okay? They looked at information, they could think critically about it, they could think about whether it was relevant or not. Another thing that I learned is that they would be able to recognize and reconstruct elements. They were able to look at different markers of information, think, uh, figure out pieces of informational text that they liked, and things that fooled them, and reconstruct it in their own text. Okay, so that was a, an, an important piece that I loved from the data. <laughs> the other thing I learned is that they had the opportunity to support each other and overcome obstacles as a group. In an economically challenged school district, there's a lot of obstacles, okay? For example, we used MacBook, uh, MacBooks that we brought in. One of them was stolen in the middle of the whole study. 
Okay, so the group of students that they lost their laptop, they were able to help each other out. Another thing that I learned, persistence and flexibility is hugely important. I think we don't spend enough time thinking about dispositions as we look at online informational uh, text and these literacies. So kids that were persistent, flexible, and able to think that way, it really advanced what they were doing in the classroom. The other huge issue was the role of the individual versus the role of the collaborative. Okay? There was an internal tension where students really want to have a love of their own individual product, but when they had to work collaboratively with others in a group, sometimes they had to put their own interest to the back. Uh, that was a huge problem, especially for higher functioning kids. So questions. How do we scaffold this? Okay? Is the writing process still valid? I go back and forth on this. As, as kids collaboratively construct or as they individually construct online informational uh, text, how do we scaffold that? Okay, what's the best process? I think we need more research in this area. Also, how do we teach kids how to collaborate? This is something that came up a couple different times today and yesterday. How do we get kids to collaborate and play fair? Okay, how do they play fair? How do they do that dance with the digital text and tools? What are the best processes to collaborate? And last but not least, this is something that Molly brought up two years ago, and it still rings true, is that there is a lot of noise in online information, okay? And so I have, and as a member of the New Lit Research Lab, and with that guy right there, we've developed a lot of online assessments, and all we've been able to measure so far is noise. So what is the next step? What is the best process in terms of assessing these online informational spaces? Done. And only a minute over.